Hello everybody, uh, we're going to go over chapter 11 in this video and I'm actually going to break up chapter 11 to three separate videos and in this one we're just going to focus on some of the physical and biological changes that are occurring during adolescence. So first of all we're going to start here with puberty. Um, puberty is a biological state where uh, the body begins to uh, develop into its adult self, into the adult version of the body. And obviously, uh, this is uh, to be coincides with adolescence. So, usually we think of adolescence as the beginning of puberty. Now, the way your body knows that it's time to begin puberty is uh, number one by accumulating enough fat that your uh, body can begin the process and finish it uh, uh, even if something happens in the middle where you can't get uh, any food or anything like that it's because it wants to begin the process of puberty so that is what the hypothalamus is looking for once the hypothalamus uh, has enough fat, or I should say the body has enough fat, and the hypothalamus determines that, then it will send a trigger, uh, a cascade of hormone to the pituitary gland. Okay. And uh, these will in turn go to the testes, or the pituitary gland will send its own cascade down to the testes for boys, and to the ovaries for girls. And uh, the ovaries in girls and the testes in boys then release their own set of hormones which uh, begin to either masculinize the body for boys or feminize the body for women. Now, it does different things throughout the body. We kind of separate this into what we call primary sex characteristics and secondary sex characteristics. Primary sex characteristics are those things that are directly related to sex and procreation. So uh, that is going to include the ovaries, the vagina, the uterus, and the fallopian tubes for girls, whereas for boys it's going to include the testes, the penis, the prostate glands, and the seminal vesicles. And all of these uh, are going to enlarge change during uh, puberty but of course we don't really get to see a lot of that um, what we get to see usually and what we associate with puberty more than anything are the secondary sex characteristics these are things that change during puberty but they're not directly related to sex and they're not directly related to procreation in women there's going to include breast development uh, uh, the changing of the body shape um, in boys that's going to include things like beard and uh, deepening of the voice and of course in both there's going to be this uh, uh, body hair issue where uh, facial hair, pubic hair, armpit hair uh, all increase uh, as you enter puberty. As I mentioned, in boys, uh, the pituitary gland uh, uh, stimulates the testes to uh, secrete testosterone and other androgens. And so that's going to result in the development of the genitals. Testicular growth uh, also accelerates uh, the production of testosterone. Uh, uh, and then, of course, testosterone triggers the development of acne. A lot of times, uh, Boys will get that acne in the back and in the face. Um, boys have erections from the time that they are born, essentially, from infancy. But they're not very frequent, although they can kind of happen randomly. And sometimes it is a little bit jarring for uh, new parents to sort of realize that their infant um, is, has had an erection. But this is completely... Uh, biological, and there's a lot of time 
unconscious. It's not like the child is uh, controlling this. Um, but right around 13 and 14, now this is more directly related to sexual stimulation. And of course, uh, the high testosterone that boys are dealing with increases the constant sexual thoughts that boys have. Uh, and it takes a while for boys to learn to control that. While boys are sleeping, sometimes they will have nocturnal emissions or what we call wet dreams. This isn't necessarily that the boy is dreaming about something sexual, although technically that could happen. Uh, this is just the body going through the process of making sure everything is working right. It's almost like a diagnosis that the body is doing to me. Um, uh, to make sure that everything is working correctly. And so sometimes uh, a boy will uh, have an erection uh, throughout the night and they will ejaculate uh, in the middle of the night. And when they wake up, they might not know what happened. Um, sometimes boys think that they went to bed, when in reality this is a normal uh, aspect of uh, growing up essentially. And, puberty specifically. Now, um, another thing that is going to happen, uh, or sometimes happens, is what we call uh, uh, gynecomastia, which is as the boys are developing, sometimes there will be an enlargement of the breast tissue in the boy. So essentially the boy will kind of look like they have or that they're growing breasts. That tends to go away uh, with time. Another thing that's going to happen is that uh, both boys and girls are going to get taller. Uh, boys tend to uh, continue to grow a little bit faster and a little bit longer. And so uh, although girls begin the process of getting taller first, uh, it tends to last just a little bit longer for boys and boys tend to usually get a little bit taller than girls. Now what happens there? is that uh, that what we call the epiphyseal plate if you look at the picture on top those are actual cells that are alive and they're going through mitosis and so they're growing and they're doubling and they're tripling and then they double again um, and essentially they push uh, what we call uh, the epiphysis up and they're essentially making the long part of the bone bigger, and as you can see here, sort of larger. Um, and the, the epiphyseal plate just continues to do this from you know, maybe uh, 10, 11, when your first growth spurt starts, um, into usually 21, and for some people, maybe even as old as 25. Um, but then all those cells stop. Uh, uh, being left, that the, the, what was cartilage there um, now becomes real bone and now we can't grow anymore uh, and so that essentially limits how tall you can get. Most of your lung bones will do this, uh, in fact I think all of your lung bones do this uh, and that is essentially how you get taller. Now, in girls, uh, it's still the pituitary gland that's sending signals, but now it's going to signal the ovaries. And the ovaries release estrogen and things like progesterone into the body. And that's going to stimulate breast tissue um, to grow. Uh, it's going to promote the growth of the hips and the buttocks. This is really important for girls because eventually women will have babies or they can have babies and uh, the hips have to change in size and shape so that the baby can come out uh, through the vagina. Um, uh, now it causes the, the labia, the vagina, the uterus to develop uh, and of course this uh, will also be uh, noticeable. Um, women do have androgens. Not as much as men, because of course the andro part of androgens means male. But women do have androgens, the same way that men do have estrogens. But women have very 
low levels of androgen. During puberty, though, they do increase, and this helps with the development of the clitoris. Now, usually, what we notice comes first. When well, we notice that a, a girl has begun puberty, we call that menage, uh, because it is the beginning of menstruation where the girl begins to essentially have a period. Um, uh, again, as I mentioned, this is triggered by a certain body weight and height. Uh, and once the hypothalamus notices this, it tells the pituitary gland to signal the ovaries or the testes if you're a boy. <laughs> now, one of the things you might hear is that over the years, there is this decline in menage. Uh, or you might have heard it said that uh, every generation, puberty comes a little bit younger. And so in the 1800s, uh, there were girls who were beginning puberty at around 17, where today we have girls that begin puberty uh, in their early teens, and in some cases, even in their pre-teens uh, in the modern world. And every once in a while, you'll, you'll hear people say that it has anything to do with evolution. And although there certainly is a possibility that that could be a, the case, it does not very likely. Evolution takes hundreds, thousands of years to happen. And this change is way too fast for it to be an evolution issue. This is in fact an issue with society getting better. In other words, we have a lot to eat in the modern world. And so that 10 year old can have a lot of fat in her body, in his body, to trigger puberty to begin to, uh, you know, at 10, at 11, at 12. Um, in the 1800s in you know Finland, um, uh, there uh, me, that that kind of access to fatty foods just wasn't available, and so girls in this scenario in this chart had to wait a lot longer before they developed enough fat so that uh, the body could begin the process of puberty. That's actually a much more reasonable reason for why we see this change than anything having to do with evolution. Essentially, if we could go back in time and find that Finnish girl in uh, 1880 when she was seven or eight and feed her the kind of food that we feed uh, children today, if she didn't die of diabetes too early, uh, we might be able to trigger her uh, Menage to start really, really early in comparison to the other people in her world or the other girls in her world. Um, now, um, obviously, estrogen and progesterone regulate the levels of menstruation when it begins, etc. Uh, ovulation doesn't actually begin uh, the during a menage. Uh, a girl will have her first period and it will be kind of spotty, meaning she might have her first period and then not have it again the next month and then have it again and then it'll stop. So it's kind of irregular for a while. Um, but when she has it, especially in that first year to year and a half, she's actually not ovulating. That is, there are no eggs being released from her ovaries. There are no ovum uh, being released from her ovaries. It's just the process of her uterus, her uterus um, uh, getting uh, prepared for the release of an ovum. And when that doesn't happen, then of course the girl has her period. But right around 12 months of, uh, after uh, the girl begins menstruation or 18 months depending on the girl then she will actually start ovulating again if you go back in time and read old mythos uh 
you might have read of you know some some girl who was barren and then the gods made her have a child and then usually in the story she has another 15 kids after that uh something along those lines really what was happening was that this girl who was 17 16 was having her period but she was not getting pregnant and people found that odd but they, what they didn't know was that she wasn't ovulating it's now when she starts ovulating then it looks like you know the gods are finally favoring her and then sure enough she keeps on having kids after that because she was in fact a fertile young girl <laughs> Now, one of the issues that happen uh, that is related to the biological aspects of puberty is that there is a difference between boys who begin puberty early and boys who begin puberty late. Usually, boys who begin puberty early tend to be more popular. They're likely to be leaders in their school. They're more poised and relaxed and good natured. This makes perfect sense. Uh, we live in a world that kind of celebrates manhood. And when li little boys start to become men, they're faster than their peers. If they start puberty early, they're stronger, they're taller, they look more like men. And of course, people start to treat them like men. And they continue to treat the late maturing boys like little boys. And so these late maturing boys tend to feel dominated by the early maturing ones, and they tend to be more dependent and insecure. Now, the one negative thing about maturing early for boys is that it is associated with aggression and delinquency, especially if there aren't social uh, aspects to sort of prevent that. Good uh, family life, good uh, male role models, things like that then that can kind of get out of hand. Although it is quite normal for boys who are being rushed with testosterone to, you know, not be able to control those levels of testosterone at first. It takes a while for them to be able to do that well. Now for girls, it is the opposite. Um, it is the early maturing uh, girls who are more likely to feel awkward, to uh, excuse me, be at greater risk for psychological problems and substance abuse. Uh, early maturing girls are more likely to obtain lower grades and to initiate sexual activity early. Why does this happen? Well, what is likely happening is that the exact opposite as the boys. When boys start looking like uh, men, they're kind of celebrated. Oh, don't you look like a man? You're so strong. Uh, you know, you're ready to go out there and kill it or whatever. When girls start to mature into women, people start treating them like women. And so other boys will sexualize them, uh, say sometimes dirty things to them. Unfortunately, uh, we live in a world where grown men will still say things to young girls who are 12 or 13, uh, but they are starting to look like women. And this can be incredibly awkward for women. And of course, anything beyond that can become uh, traumatic because any kind of uh, sexual harassment or sexual abuse uh, for that 13 year old is gonna be incredibly overwhelming. And if they don't know what's happening, they don't get the proper help, um, which, Unfortunately, they often don't because we have a society that also tells girls it's your fault when men, you know, sexualize you. Uh, why were you wearing those clothes or why did you say to that boy or to that man? Why was he treating you that way? We often sort of blame women for those kinds of behaviors towards them. And so what girls learn to do is to just not say anything, try to avoid those situations. And that can be incredibly overwhelming for these young girls who are maturing earlier than the rest of their uh, 
appears. Alright, around 818, both boys and girls tend to be more satisfied with their bodies. Um, uh, early in adolescence, your body starts changing and you feel very awkward about it. Uh, but usually by 18, you have a sort of a body that you're used to and it looks like an adult body. And you uh, tend to be more at ease with it. Um, Adolescent females tend to be more upset with body weight and sl slimness than adolescent males. That's not uh, a more social thing uh, than it is a biological one. We tell girls that uh, their weight is important, where what we tell boys is that their muscles are important. And so boys tend to be more obsessed with muscle mass. Again, it's important to point out that it's not equal here. It's not like boys are obsessed or we tell boys to be obsessed with their muscles and we tell girls to be obsessed with uh, their weight we have a much larger push you know girls get a lot of uh, both conscious and unconscious cues about what they're supposed to look like all the time where although boys uh, do get that push to be more muscular just not quite as uh, as overt. And you can see this just sort of normally just because you have friends that are boys and girls. As, you know, girls tend to almost always be obsessed with their weight. Whereas some boys are obsessed with their muscles, but that's not necessarily all the boys that you know. A lot of boys are just sort of, you know, not even thinking about it. All right, talk a little bit about health in adolescence. In Adolescents, uh, most deaths are occurring by things that have little or nothing to do with, uh, you, with actual health. You'll notice that for males, accidents, suicides, and homicides are the first or the top three uh, reasons for death. And then cancer and heart disease come next. Um, for girls, Accidents and suicides are the first two. Cancer comes third, and homicide is fourth. You see, it's quite um, similar. The difference is that boys are more likely to be a part of gangs or to be uh, to be hurt in a in doing violence uh, by just strangers or uh, excuse me, people that they know because boys are a little bit more aggressive. But the difference is just slight there between boys and girls. And you'll, see, you'll continue to see this kind of dynamic um, into uh, early adulthood. And then it, it's about sort of middle adulthood uh, where we start to see a change and uh, diseases are more likely to be the cause of death than accidents and suicide and cancer. So it, right now, the biggest sources of death for teenagers and adolescents in general tend to be man-made ones. Um, during adolescence, uh, the average girl should be eating somewhere between 1,800 calories and 2,400 calories, depending on how tall you are and also how much exercise you do and things like that. I'd like to point out that this is incredibly high. If you are 18, 19, 20 or older, and you're still eating 2,400 calories a day, you're going to start gaining a lot of weight that you don't want. Um, during adolescence, you're eating more because you're building a body and you're making your body bigger. And so, you know, you'll often hear parents say things like, these kids are eating me out of house and home because they don't stop eating. That's very normal in adolescence. For boys, uh, the average boy is eating 2,200 calories to around 3,200 calories, depending on their height. So I am an adult, and I'm about 5 foot 7, 5 foot 8, and I eat about 2,000 calories a day. That's the normal top unless you know I go for a jog or I um you know it's one of my weeks where I'm doing really good in my exercise routine 
then I can maybe go up to 2200, 2400. But that's really high for me to be eating if I'm not exercising every day. If you're eating, if a boy is eating at 18, 19, 20, 3200 calories, they're going to start gaining a lot of weight. It's important, I like to point that out because you guys are probably right at that cusp where you're used to eating a bag of chips and Coke every day or every other day along with three meals and that's going to stop really fast. If you continue to eat like that past around 18 or 19, you're going to start gaining weight uh, really fast. So it's important for you to get a hold of that. Uh, start working out a lot more, do a lot more cardio, uh, maybe weight lift, uh, or slow down that calorie intake by a lot. Okay. Now, calcium intake does build bone density, uh, and uh, especially in women, it's important that uh, they're getting a lot of calcium. It's also true for boys, but osteoporosis is usually more associated with women than men uh, early on and in uh, excuse me and later on in life you know to your uh, 50s and 60s and so it's important to be drinking things like milk or eating other foods that have enough calcium that your bones can be strong uh, obviously if you're only eating cheetos then that's going to prevent you from having all the right nutrients that you need. Uh, a lot of the fast foods, a lot of the junk food that we eat, it does not actually have the nutrition necessary uh, to go through uh, or to build a healthy body. Now, I mentioned already that there is a push for girls to be rather thin in our culture. And so girls are much more likely than boys to deal with eating disorders. Uh, and there's a few that I just want to talk about. Uh, the first one you might, you're going to read about is anorexia nervosa, which we, most people just call anorexia. Anorexia is a eating disorder related to OCD. And what happens is that there are obsessive thoughts, obsessive thoughts like, I'm no good, um, I'm too fat, people don't love me, people don't like me, there's something wrong with me. And the obsessive, uh, the, the obsessive thought, the compulsion is restricting eating. And so now these people stop eating and they will, every time that they refuse food, it makes them feel better for a little while. And then those thoughts come back. And then when they refuse the food again, it makes them feel better for a little while. Uh, now, the anorexia is usually associated with the extreme fear of getting heavy. Um, those are, that's going to be part of the obsession. Um, boys do get things like anorexia. It'll look a little different for boys, usually. Um, the boys can get anorexia, but it is the uh, uh, a disorder that we mostly associate with women in our culture. There are some cultures where more men uh, will go through this, but then that has to do a little bit more with you know, religious obsessions um, and things like that. Uh, obviously, if you're not eating, your health is going to decline. Uh, it's going to affect your respiratory tract, your uh, endocrine, that is your hormones your heart, your cardiovascular system, uh, you might start to grow uh, thin white hair all over your body. Uh, and uh, obviously you're going to uh, start starving, you're going to get incredibly skinny, and uh, with time you could die from anorexia nervosa. Um, it can be that uh, debility. Oh, and most people with anorexia tend to have a distorted body image. That is, they are incredibly skinny. But if you ask them to draw themselves what they think they look like, they will often draw someone that is way larger 
way fatter or bigger than they actually are. There is a little bit of a delusion about what they look like in reality. Now, the other uh, eating disorder that uh, begins to take hold, again, often in girls during adolescence, is bulimia nervosa. And bulimia is a little different. There are still obsessive thoughts about not being good enough and about uh, not people not loving you or you being somehow not, uh, not good enough uh, in the eyes of others. But instead of rejecting food, these people go through a binge eating and purging cycle. So what does that look like? In a binge eating cycle, uh, the person might go to the store and buy lots of food, enough food to feed 10 people. They go home, they prepare it, they make a big dinner. Um, and by the way, the buying and preparing of the food is part of the uh, compulsion. Then they eat all of the food until they gorge themselves, and then they purge it somehow. The classic purging is they go to the bathroom, and they force themselves to throw up all of the food that they just ate. When you do that, especially if you do that on a regular basis, you're going to erode the mucus lining of your esophagus, uh, and the acid is going to burn, uh, it's going to hurt every time you eat, and the acid of your stomach will also start to destroy your teeth in your mouth. So some people don't do that. Some people do laxatives. And in laxatives, basically they eat the laxative and then they go to the bathroom, they go to the toilet, and they sort of let it out that way. It's for this reason that people who have bulimia are very seldom skinny skinny. They tend to be normal weight or in fact a little bit heavier than normal because their body is actually taking in a bunch of nutrients and after a while the body goes I don't know how long we're going to have this food inside of us so take up as much as you can, turn as much of it as you can into fat and in fact these people tend to be again either normal weight or a little bit heavier. I did mention, well let me just make this point, um, if you're doing bulimia or if, you know, if a person is bulimic then um, their menstrual cycle is going to be disrupted. It's going to become irregular. Uh, the same thing is true with anorexia. Essentially, they're going to stop having a period. And the uh, messing of the hormones might lead to things like depression. So from the anxiety, uh, the OCD feelings, that may lead, uh, you know, you'll go through the eating disorder, and that will then worsen by creating things like depression. I mentioned that bulimia is also associated more with girls, but men do get bulimia as well. Uh, again, it looks slightly different. Uh, what men tend to do is binge eat, but then instead of purging by going to the bathroom, taking laxatives or throwing up, they'll go to the gym for two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon and two hours at night and then it'll just get worse, three hours, five hours. Um, and at first, they're going to look really great because that pattern of eating, especially by eating a lot of protein and going to the gym for two and three hours uh, over and over and over again, they're going to start looking really good at first. They're going to get muscular. Uh, if they were overweight, they're going to get thinner. But then they can't stop because, of course, they weren't going to the gym because they wanted to you know, be stronger. They're going to the gym because it's part of their compulsion. And so they continue to do it and they continue to do it. And these men get bigger and bigger and bigger um, until essentially they just don't look right. Their body is too muscular and they don't look healthy anymore. But of course they can't stop because this is related to their mental disorder. Do women do that pattern where they uh, go, you know, go to the gym for a long time? Yes, there are women who do that, but it is rare and it's also more obvious because in our culture, when women are too muscular, 
we notice it's very rare and so we notice that right away a lot more do boys go to the classic version of Bolivia where they binge eat and they purge by throwing up yes that does happen as well um, uh, but it does tend to be slightly different if you men. Now, one of the things that we know is that a lot of eating disorders have to do with sexual fears. In other words, sometimes men will accost women and tell them how good they look, and they will imply that they want to have sex with them. And of course, we all know that in some cases, men can be more aggressive, touching women or uh, sort of pushing on them sexually. And we now know that when this happens to especially young girls early on, it increases the chance that they're going to deal with an eating disorder. Sometimes anorexia, sometimes bulimia, and sometimes just the binge eating. So not the bulimia where it's binge eating and purging, but just the binge eating, where you're just eating and eating and eating obsessively, and you get bigger and bigger. And uh, we know that this is related with child abuse, it's related with sexual uh, abuse uh, in women as well. Um, there aren't a lot of genetic factors that are connected to binge eating. They tend to mostly be sociocultural. Um, uh, and uh, there is this it involved obs uh, obsessions and uh, being a perfectionist sort of personality traits. And again, that goes back to that idea of that OCD. The obsessive thoughts often lead to those uh, kinds of disorders. I'm going to pause here for this uh, video. And in the next video, I am going to talk a little bit about cognition.